Football-wise, this is about Europe's top teams battling it out. But from a sponsorship perspective, Euro 2020 is well and truly global. This time around, it's Chinese brands that have become the most noticeable. Four of the 12 main sponsors of the tournament are from China, including digital payments firm Alipay. Football is the very important uh, universal uh, language and it also can, can help us to bridge all kinds of the people you know, around the world. You know, that's why we're in line with uh, UEFA. You know, uh, we have an uh, eight-year deal. The Hangzhou-based firm didn't disclose the deal's amount for contractual reasons, but said it's part of a wider strategy to take services that are well known in China to users around the world. Other Chinese brands on display are electronics maker Hisense, telecoms firm Vivo and social media giant TikTok. As things stand, the final is set to be played here at London's Wembley Stadium in front of 60,000 fans, with hundreds of millions more watching worldwide. But it's no longer just billboards that companies are vying for. In the digital age, the very way that brands are advertising at these mega events is also changing. There's been a, such a move away from traditional, uh, what we call sponsorship, where is awareness, it's hospitality, it's signage, it's it's uh, program ads and much more around storytelling and activation and data and content. And you'll see that a number of the brands um, that have been involved in the sponsorship of the Euros like Vivo and Alipay and TikTok, they're all innovative tech brands who are looking for innovative partnerships. And it's not just football that many brands are eyeing. The power of sport is appealing for firms looking to boost their presence in new markets. For other area, you know, we we're open to basketball, badminton, you know, table tennis, because sports is the best lifestyle I, I think that people can enjoy. So we want to make their life easier. The sponsors of major sports events have shifted in recent decades, signifying the rise of Asia in the global economy. From the Japanese brands in the 1980s to South Korean firms in the following decades, it's now Chinese players exhibiting on the world's biggest sporting stages.